Hello, I'm Penny Thornton and welcome to my weekly take on the astrology. What's going on out there? And actually rather a lot more on this occasion, because this is the third part of my trilogy on the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. We began that three weeks ago, and we've looked at it from all sorts of angles. Uh, The last one, I looked at uh, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction from the 12 signs of the zodiac and, and, and where this is likely to be a process that you're going to be facing. Now I'm going to wrap it all up together. And in a way, what's so important about the week ahead is that Uh, already we can see that uh, the potential for this Saturn-Pluto conjunction and the lunar eclipse, uh, which will certainly make uh, for landmark developments, we can already begin to see how that is coming about. Now, what I've said a couple of times is that although we're looking at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction to happen on the 12th, 13th of uh, January, depending where you are in the world, and of course the lunar eclipse coming up on the Friday, which uh, really is like the herald of this very important alignment. It's been in the process of becoming for the last year, from January 2019, and it will continue to be in operation right through 2020. But there's no doubting that this particular point, um, the actual conjunction at the end of this week, is going to be the center point. And a lot of the uh, things that are brewing at the moment on a global level, and perhaps you can look at your own life as well. We just come through Christmas and New Year. So a lot of situations have been percolating at this time. And you can see yourself that something is going to have to give going to have to be some big decisions made in January. And this is all focusing on this very powerful alignment we have coming up. Now, um, one of the things that um, I want to talk about in terms of how we have a signature or events at the moment have a signature of what's going on astrologically on them is that in the early hours of Friday morning, um, Kasim Suleiman, Uh, the military commander uh, in Iran was assassinated by the Americans. And this is bound to be, and is for sure, I can say this with great confidence, uh, a really defining event in the Middle East. What happens in the wake of this assassination is going to change history. Um, Now, I can't tell you exactly what that event will be, but there will certainly be a retaliation by Iran and all its proxies for the assassination of this hero. And he was a messianic figure and really responsible, not only for um, a lot of um, espionage and of uh, major kind of endeavors and um, uh, in, in terms of terror sprites, but also by uh, building alliances uh, of various groups and military groups, which uh, with the intention of making Iran um, a superpower. So his loss is incalculable to Iran and there will be reprisals, we know that for sure. So I want to move on a little bit and and look at um, how astrologers look at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and how astrologers view astrology, if you like. Um, there may be some astrologers out there who definitely see a cause and effect principle. And even those of us who don't see it quite like that, in our vocabulary, when we talk about the planets, we do tend to say, because this and that is there, this is likely to happen. Um, But in point of fact, I think for for many of us, and certainly for myself, um, the cycles of the planets, the alignments of the planets, they are, if you like, kind of evolving all by themselves and they're kind of mirroring or they are in tandem with events on Earth. So they supply a kind of narrative in terms of the astrology which helps us understand history and the unfolding of history as it is now. Um, so um, when I think about the current kind of pattern, the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, which will happen on Sunday and Monday of this coming week. I am also reminded that 
um, in recent weeks, I've talked about the presence of Aries or Eris, however you want to call her, um, that uh, the, the dwarf planet, just as big as Pluto, whose properties are to do with discord and devastation. And her degree of the zodiac is 23 degrees of Aries. So she is squaring the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and is at the intersection of that lunar eclipse. So her presence in this mix um, is also important, is something we have to look at. Now, I look particularly at what's happening at the moment, and not only with the assassination of uh, uh, Suleiman, but also the fires in Australia, which are absolutely devastating. We're seeing great tracts of land. People have lost lives, livelihoods. It is almost impossible to view what's happening without you know, having some kind of sense of how apocalyptic it all is. And I would also say this too is a reflection of the astrological portents of the time. Now, in my other two videos, I've gone back and looked at some of the other Saturn-Pluto conjunctions, which also give us some insight on what's happening at the moment and what the likely um, manifestations of this conjunction will be in the year to come. And I looked at 1982 and 1947 and 1517. Now, the reason I looked at 1517 is that Saturn and Pluto were in conjunction in Capricorn, and in that year, Martin Luther uh, published his 95 Theses, and it was the action of this publication that inspired, precipitated, vast political and religious reform. And, uh, of course, it became the Reformation or the Reformation. And to me, those two words, Reformation, Reformation, really encapsulate what the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is all about. It's the redistribution of power. It is the changing of boundaries, which we can see on a nation-to-nation -nation scale, as well as in terms of political, global, um, financial, all these kind of things will now be under this sense of reforming, redistribution, the reformation really of all these institutions. Now, the other very important thing, which I haven't yet mentioned about the Saturn-Pluto conjunction, two words, fear and paranoia. When we look at Saturn in a natal chart and we come to terms with what Saturn means, we see that it often represents those things we're weak on, with our weaknesses within us. And of course, we fear what we don't understand. We're frightened, you know, we, we, we can't manage. And if we also look at the idea of Saturn's boundaries, we can look at Saturn forming a protection, something that we can't go past. But that boundary, that source of protection is also a prison. So we, when, when we look at fear represented by Saturn, we see that we are bounded by our own fears, we're imprisoned by them. Throw Pluto in the mix as well. And we think that Pluto has dominion over the over dark and fearful places. When we put them together, it's a very powerful cocktail. We can see this in our own individual lives. And the important thing for us to do, regardless of our sun sign, because I promise you that Saturn-Pluto conjunction is affecting us all. There isn't a single person alive on this earth who isn't reflecting or or going through a Saturn-Pluto process. And the thing to really be able to get a grip on it, because I'm not in the business of fear-mongering or standing there pontificating about what's going on. I'm there to say, look, let's use this. Let's work with what we've got. Let's make a use of the astrology that we know and understand. And what we do with the Saturn-Pluto conjunction is quite simply face off the ears. What are they? Bring them right out into the light. Look at them. And of course, what we want to do is gain mastery over them. Now, of course, that's not a simple process. But what we can do, the exercise we can do is really to think about what is the worst thing that could happen to us? What do we fear most in the world? 
And when we really look at that and see that we would have to survive beyond that, we begin to be able to have mastery over our fears. And I'm going to draw in again the Australian bushfires. Look how many thousands and thousands of people have lost their homes, their livelihoods, lives have been lost. Total devastation. Yet all those that have lost everything will rise again. They will rebuild because that's human nature. And out of that rebuilding, like the phoenix rising from the ashes, will come new life. And we really have to get a grip on that Saturn-Pluto process and not just see it as devastation and endings and things that we can't do anything about. There is always life after devastation. We can never forget that. And I also thought of another way of looking at this idea of fear, fear and paranoia, which um, Saturn and Pluto definitely managed to put together, is that we need to dispel them. And if we really look at that word dispel, we can look at the word be spell. We can get rid of the spell that these planets have on us, that our fears and paranoia have on us, that get rid of it, and we are free. Now, if we go back to 1982, uh, the Saturn Pluto conjunction in Libra, one of the developments at that time that we only learned about in the wake of that, maybe 20 years or so later, was how close the West and Russia came to uh, a nuclear exchange. And the reason for that was that um, Russian intelligence misinterpreted what they were seeing happening in the West. And because of the fear of being struck by a, a nuclear missile, they decided that the best thing was to attack. It all, of course, ended well, as we know. But that is a complete example of how fear and paranoia actually precipitate and cause the devastation that we're all trying to avoid. We go back to 1947 and the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in Leo. In the wake of World War II, there was a huge amount of um, rearrangement and redistribution of land. The boundaries changed. We saw, for instance, the uh, emergence of Saudi Arabia, you know, today. And of course, that's right in the center of all these huge Middle Eastern um, uh, ravages that are occurring at the moment, even though at the same time, what we've seen coming out of Saudi Arabia is definite steps towards um, freeing women, uh, which is a good thing, but it's still nonetheless, because of that Saturn-Pluto conjunction, the presence of another Saturn-Pluto conjunction is going to be a very difficult period for Saudi Arabia. We look to Pakistan and India in the wake of the British Empire um, letting go of India, if you like, a simple way of putting it. India was uh, formed and so was Pakistan. It was formed in 1947 on this Saturn-Pluto conjunction. And what is going on, particularly in India at the moment, is this huge array of protests and disruption. And 2020 is going to... Uh, bring some very difficult situations, I think, in India and Pakistan too, if only kind of rearrange the furniture and to change things ultimately for the better. Now, coming back to our Saturn-Pluto conjunction this time around on the Sunday and Monday, 12th and 13th of January, you could say that the cardinal signs, Aries, Libra, Cancer and Capricorn, are in the front line of this Saturn-Pluto process, and also, of course, of the eclipse. But honestly and truly, I think if you find, if you get your natal charts out, you'll see that you have something that's going to pick up the Saturn-Pluto and the lunar eclipse, and it's going to affect us all. And I think, again, looking at the idea of fear and paranoia, if we allow fear and par paranoia to get a grip on us, then we tend to self-destruct. And we can see this happening on a global scale as well. And if you, you know, get in touch with some of the social media that's going on at the moment and the fact that there are opinions that this assassination of Suleiman is going to precipitate World War III, 
that's a clear example of fear and paranoia taking over, and that's not necessarily the, the, the case. Let's say it may get worse before it gets better, but that doesn't mean that you know our worst case scenarios will indeed come about. And I think we need to keep a definite grip on our fears and paranoia about that. I also want to look at a whole different tack of this Saturn-Pluto lunar eclipse, eclipse combination. Um, there are certain schools of thought, mystics, astrologers, uh, clairvoyants, who believe this uh, incredible uh, alignment is really a very powerful and spiritual time, and that it bodes or will allow or is a portent of a new era of peace and also an expansion of consciousness. And of course, that's a wonderful thing to believe in and to work towards. But I have to say that this is not the first time that great alignments have been given this power to increase and expand consciousness so that we move towards an enlightened era. There was a great convergence of August 1987. There was the great convergence of November 2003. And by the way, I've written about these, uh, these things in an article on Astrolutely. You can go there in the article section and, and read about the great harmonic convergences. Um, and of course, there was the 2012 event as we passed over from December into 2013. It was considered to be the end of the Mayan calendar and that both the end of the world was um, predicted, but also perhaps more often this idea that we were ending one era of conflict and uh, darkness. And what was going to begin now was this era of enlightenment. Well, we are certainly uh, almost eight years on seven or eight years on from 2012 and goodness knows how many years on from the other convergences and I don't think we can say that humanity appears to have expanded its consciousness at all or we have brought the end to discord um, that's very much part of our lives but you know something I coming back to the idea of what we fear we draw towards us I think in some ways we have to live with discord we have to learn to manage it. We have to, the only thing we can work on, of course, uh, are ourselves. We can work on discord in our own family. We can work on facing our fears in our own individual lives and by those acts uh, helping towards the collective sweep. But we may also want to think of in philosophical and spiritual terms that maybe we are going through some kind of purification. This is the way it's meant to be. And if we face this with confidence and with fearlessness, then we are going to come through it, maybe as we all hope for that enlightened and expanded state of consciousness. So I'm leaving you this week with some very profound thoughts, but I think there is a tendency, and I may be guilty of this myself, of looking at the Saturn-Pluto conjunction and seeing it only in its darkest light, without any sense of what a great purpose it um, does also supply, and that if we focus on that, then we can deal with what we're facing individually and collectively in a much more positive and effective way. So thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Same place, same time. Bye for now.